Cavendish apparatus verifies the existence of gravitational force of attraction between two objects. This is done independent of Earth's gravity. It offers a very simple way to measure a very tiny force. It is also a reliable way to measure the gravitational constant. The apparatus consists of a torsion pendulum and a draft excluding case. The pendulum has two 25 gram lead balls and a very fine suspension filament which has a torsion constant of 4.5 micronewton meters. The pendulum period is close to 10 minutes. Two large 2 kilogram lead balls are encased in plastic and used to provide gravitational attraction. All the materials that have lead in them in this apparatus are encased and safe to handle. To dampen the oscillations of the pendulum, there is a vein submerged in a silicone oil bath. The adjustable reservoir allows you to ensure correct coverage. The built-in mirror allows you to measure the angular position of the pendulum. Since these are very small changes, you will need an optical lever and you will have to provide a laser and a millimeter scale. For transportation purposes, the pendulum is immobilized. You would turn this knob very slowly to take the weight off of the bracket and place it onto the pendulum filament. You need to do this slowly. If you do go, go too quick, you will break the filament. Next thing for you to do is to set up your laser optical lever. You would place the two large balls they are in the neutral position now, but then you would turn them to the right. You want to make sure that this is touching the glass, and you should notice that the gravitational attraction will cause the reflected laser ray to move. Eventually, this will come to rest when the torque due to the gravitational force equals the torque in the filament. Once it comes to rest, record this position. Now reverse the position of the balls and the reflected laser ray will come to rest again. Record this new position. Each of the two steps above will take about one to two hours for it to stop oscillating and come to rest. The movement of the pointer tells you the period of the pendulum. This enables you to calculate the torsion constant of the filament and thus the gravitational force. With these, you can logically determine the gravitational constant. If this process is too long, there actually is a shorter way to do it, but you will not get the 2% error. So this is how we do the quicker method. You start with the same initial setup. With the pendulum at rest, record the initial laser ray position. Now turn the large masses to the other side and start a stopwatch and measure the position of the laser every 15 seconds for the first five minutes. You would then draw a graph and calculate the initial acceleration in the first few seconds from this graph. Using Newton's second laws, the acceleration, mass of the pendulum ball, you can calculate F, which is twice the gravitational force. The trade-off for this quick method is 10 minutes will give you better than 10% accuracy while the long experiment up to four hours will give you better than 2% accuracy. Another experiment that you can do is to verify the inverse square law. You will need these white caps that fit into the little slots right next to the calibrated scale. You would set this up as normal except place these on the caps and you would measure the distance that it is from the pendulum ball. Initially, wait for it to come to rest. Record the laser's, laser's position. Move both balls on either side the same distance. Allow it to stabilize and record the laser's position. You keep repeating this over different distances. Make sure you move both balls the same distance each time. The results that you get from your optical lever should verify the inverse square law. Since we don't know the exact value of our planet's weight, the exact radius, this is a really wonderful apparatus to determine the gravitational constant without involving astronomy. The instruction manual goes over all the specifications, 
as well as the different activities that you can do. And you really have to applaud Cavendish to be able to determine with such precision the gravitational constant without involving astronomy and the time that he did.